Welcome everyone. This is going to be a, kind of a long tutorial, so I'm going to get started right in here. I started with a wooden cross that I got at Hobby Lobby and painted black. I used a matte black paint on this just so it, it would be easier for the camera to see the satin kind of reflects the, the lights that I'm using, but the matte black works really well. So I'm adding some simple guidelines here, just going from the points on the corners of this uh, Byzantine style cross and adding some hatch marks there. And then I'm going to measure the halfway distance between the center and the bottom line because I'll be doing some detail work on the longest section of the cross. Just measuring an inch up from that center point on either side to put four more marks. And I'll be using those later. These are the paints that I used. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on the mixing this time because like I said we need to get right to work. These are the dotting tools from Mark's Mandalas and the pointy q-tips that I use for mistakes and some of the smaller manicure stylus or embossing tools that you can use for detail work. And just this, this the consistency of paints, you want it to be like soft yogurt. And I mixed up a lot of this um, deep magenta because um, I'm going to be really loading the center dots with those so they're nice and fat, almost like little buttons or little jewels on this cross. So I'm mixing up the deep magenta and an orange and a yellow and I'm also going to be using a, a very nice fine gold and I just keep white on the side in case I need to mix it in to bring down the tone of some of my paints because they will darken as they dry and as I'm working and I see it getting too dark then I will add a little bit white to it to just try and bring that back a notch because I, I want it to dry the color that it is in the palette. So I'm using tool number 15 for the center dot in a deep magenta. And I'm using tool D, or you could use a brush, to uh, pick up some more of that paint and just sort of transfer it over there and tap it in. And it will build up a nice mounded uh, button of paint. It's really interesting once you've got the first dot there it kind of acts as a barrier and it doesn't spill over if your paint is the right consistency. It just gets taller and taller. You can see that's got pretty good depth on it. So now I'm using a small tool. You could also use a toothpick to put a small dot on each of the yellow guidelines. And then we'll be working in between those. So I find the middle point in between two of the dots and put a dot there and then there should be enough room for two more on either side. And you might want to experiment with that on a piece of paper to make sure you have enough room before you try it on the cross. I went all the way around. You can see they're not all exactly the same size. And I really didn't like this spacing over here, so I got my little pointy q-tip and I removed two of the dots, and scraping it off, and then I added some more of that black paint, and then went back and just replaced them. And that looks a little bit better to my eye. So tool number six for the next row, and these are offset magenta just line up the tool in between the yellow dots and go all the way around. Try and get them all the same size if you can. Now I'm going to use tool number seven for the next row of orange dots placed on the guidelines and then we'll be going in between the guidelines and that's going to cause uh, It'll be a little difficult. You'll need to look across the center dot so you can make sure it's lined up in between. Because we don't have a guideline there to help us, but we do have two magenta dots and you can just snug it right in there in between them and that should get you right in between those. 
without using a guideline. I'm switching to my favorite gold paint. This is Golden Fluid Iridescent Gold Fine. It really does look gilt and uh, a lot of the artwork that we saw in uh, Jerusalem, especially in the oldest churches, they used a lot of gold. And so I wanted to add a gold element to this design. So just snugging that in between each of the orange dots. Now tool number 10, I'm going to add more orange dots, a little bit bigger. And these are going to go on the guidelines. And then once again, in between the guidelines, he just lined it, lined it up with that previous orange dot. And it's always good to look across and make sure that it's lining up all the way across. There. Now I'm using a small tool to walk the dots around those orange dots. I'm using that deep magenta and walking the dots simply means loading up your tool and then tapping it in a line or in a curve and as you tap it it loses paints and so the dots get smaller. So now using three larger dots in that same magenta on either side there at the end of the petal and then switching back to the orange to continue to walk those dots back up to the center. So a large magenta one and then two smaller ones on either side and then using the tool to walk those up. And I only did that on the four corners because there's, there's no room on all of them. So now tool number seven, we're going to switch to that bright blue. This was a very common color theme that we saw in a lot of the stained glass window where you, you have these deep um, magentas and reds and yellows and then switching to a, like a cobalt blue or an emerald green. So to finish this row we're going to finish in yellow. And then do that on all four corners. Now using tool number eight, we're going to go to the light blue and then switching to the smaller tool to put smaller dots on either side of that just to finish off those petals. Isn't that pretty? So now tool number 12, we're going to be adding some more large magenta, those magenta dots. I'm going to put those right on those cross hatch marks that we made earlier. And all four of them. And then once again, scooping up paint and just tapping that in to load up those dots so they look like little buttons. Now using bright blue, and we'll be walking dots around these in the other direction. First starting with the bright blue and then switching to the lighter shade and walking that down to the bottom of the dot. And then doing another row the same way, a little bit larger tool. Three bright blue dots and switching over to the light blue and walking those down around the previous row. 
You want your smallest dots to just sort of fade into nothingness at the bottom there. And do that on all four corners. Once that is done, I went back to the size 12 again and did four more magenta dots and loaded them up like buttons. And now I'm mixing up some transitional colors for the fan shapes at the bottom and the outside edges of the cross. I've got that deep magenta, sort of a very, very dark reddish orange magenta and then a medium orange, a light orange, and a yellow, and then I also mixed up a purple. So we're just going to do a fan shape at the bottom here. And the trick to this is to just create a dot, make sure it's got a lot of paint on it, and then use another tool to drag that up toward the magenta dot. And then we're going to go to the next darker shade, which is the, the very lightest shade of orange. Put that on either side. Use a pointier tool, and we're going to just drag that up. Switching to the medium orange. And again, I'd recommend trying out your paints on a piece of paper or cardstock to make sure that they will drag. <laughs> if you have them the right consistency, they really will. But if they're too thick or they're they're too thin, they will they will not work. So practice it on a piece of paper to make sure they behave. Because you don't want them uh, sort of pooling out. You don't want your little swooshes to run into each other or leak and. You want to leave those fine black lines in between the swooshes. That helps give them definition. So I finished with that dark magenta. Now I'm switching over to this purple in this little tiny space. Just to finish off the fan. Like that. And I'm going to do that on all four corners. And there's a little bit less room on these um, horizontal corners. There's a little bit more at the top and the bottom, so you just kind of adjust with the space that you have. There they are. All four fans are now in place. So now I'm going to add some large magenta swooshes on that bottom curve right next to the fan. Drag that over to the other point. And I'm going to do that on all four corners. So I'm going to turn it, load up that first dot with a lot of paint, and then drag it over. And you'll find that it's easier to drag one direction and it's harder to drag the other. For me, I'm a right-handed person, so it's a little harder for me to drag to the left. It's harder for me to see where I'm going. Okay, we have those on all four corners now. And if you don't like it, what you've done, if the it didn't drag right, just use your Q-tip and take it off and repaint and then try again. Until you get it the way you like. So now I'm walking this uh, medium orange around those side magenta dots and then the lighter shade of orange. And then the lightest shade. 
see they're getting a little bigger. So we're doing each row. We'll walk those around until they kind of disappear at the top. And then we'll be switching to bright blue. Oh, that was tool number seven. <laughs> and walking those in just the inside in between those two and then we're going to do that on the other side as well so once that is done let's switch over to that bright blue size number 12 and doing that center dot that we marked earlier and then the size 9 in the medium orange on either side of that and the size 6 in the lighter orange to make two smaller dots on either side of the orange dot And then I use that very dark reddish orange for just a small dot on the outside edge. And then we're going to switch over to the blue again. I'm just figuring out what tools can fit in there. Size 8 works. And put another bright blue dot right on the guideline. and then switch to tool number five to put three light blue dots at the end of the top and bottom of that row. And then one small light blue dot. Okay, now we're going to drag some more. I use this dark reddish orange and I'm going to drag on either side at the bottom of the cross. Really load that paint up so you have enough to drag. And then do that on all four corners. Only going about halfway up on those sides. And I decided I needed an additional row of these blue dots. So I just did the same thing, the three with the bright blue and then finishing with the, the lighter shade. So now I've got three rows down there at the bottom. There was just too much space. Okay, now I am walking some of the bright blue dots. This is to fill up space and to give a nice uh, sort of burst of color along the edges of the cross. So just walking those toward the center, just where our swishes ended off, and then walking those toward each of the corners. And then along the bottom, we decided to walk up with those and then also walk toward the center there at the bottom and kind of wrap around that swoosh a little bit. And then repeat the same thing on each corner. Wrap around that magenta swoosh right to that little purple one, and then you're going to walk those up till they disappear.
I'm going to allow that to dry before I put on my top dots. I'm starting with the very darkest shade of orange and putting an orange small top dot on each of those magenta dots. And now switching to the D tool with the bright blue. And this is going to go on the orange dots there in the center of the mandala. I just liked the contrast of the, the blue and the orange. And then I'm going to switch to a lighter shade of blue and do the smaller orange dots that are right next to it. And a couple of light blue dots right there on those orange ones. And then a couple, I'm doing three on each of those orange swooshes. And then switching over to the light shade of orange to go on the magenta swooshes. Adding a couple light blue top dots there at the end of that petal. I'm going to turn that around and do that same pattern light blue on the orange swooshes, medium orange on the magenta swooshes, and then a couple light blue top dots at the end of the petal. Let's see what that looks like. And we are all finished painting. Congratulations, that's a big project. Now we're going to let that dry overnight and then remove the lines with a damp Q-tip. And you can paint over any remaining lines with a little bit of that black paint. Thanks for watching everyone. There's more slides of my trip at the end of this video if you'd like to see them. didn't travel 6,700 miles from my hometown to Jerusalem to find God because he found and rescued me right here when I was 16 years old. I, uh, I didn't go because I thought a pilgrimage to the Holy Land would uh, grant me favor or bonus points in his eyes because I already know how precious I am to him. He, he sent his his only son to save me from my sins. I, I guess I went in part to see where Jesus lived and built his church. It was amazing to walk on the very same stony steps and, and stand in the actual synagogues and where he taught and to go out on the Sea of Galilee. But the ancient buildings and archeological wonders, as amazing as they were, they weren't as precious as the people who are living there now are. Each person is made in the image of God. And the Muslims and Jews and Christians and the Bedouins and the Druze that I met in Israel are far more beautiful than any building and far more valuable than any dusty relic that they dig up. I ate meals with them, and I, I shopped in their stores, and I 
I visited mosques and synagogues and Christian churches and, and homes and schools and I saw how hard they have to work to provide for their families. And well, I, I fell in love with them all <laughs> and I really did. And uh, I still see their faces and I pray for the peace of Jerusalem. <laughs>